And welcome to a Wednesday night Bible study here at Faith and Victory Church. Praise the Lord. We're uh, continuing our series on the Bible in the light of our redemption. Sorry we're late. As soon as we got ready to go live, there was a Facebook update. And um, praise the Lord. I think they do them on Wednesday nights and Sundays just to shut churches down. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, hallelujah. But we're here. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Remember in our previous lessons, we were talking about man's spiritual death, uh, the problem he faced and the father faced in redeeming man, his, his need for a mediator. And um, we, we uh, came to the point in that that the only way that uh, a mediator could be, um, uh, the only mediator that could be, had to be a combination of God and man. It had to be a divine being outside the authority, the realm uh, of Satan's domain, yet human. And uh, this was um, uh, is, is accomplished in only one person. Praise the Lord. And um, with the incarnation uh, of deity, with humanity, will provide the, uh, the substitute of deity and humanity united on such grounds that the incarnate one can stand as man's mediator, but being equal with God on the one hand and uniting with man on the other, he's able to bring the two together. Praise the Lord. Um, again, being deity and humanity united, he'll be able to assume the obligations of human treason, satisfy the claims of justice, and therefore bridge the chasm uh, between God and man. Praise the Lord. Thank God for it. Can you say A to the men? Hallelujah. And I'm fi I am finally got up live enough that I can share and let everybody know we're on. And so here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So God, almost immediately after the fall of man, promises a, um incarnation. And... Um, we know from, you know, um, when man committed high treason, he died spiritually. Uh, the condition that he described according to Ephesians 2.12 was without God, without hope in the world. Um, but God began with his love to begin to work on man's behalf immediately. Hallelujah. The Father God faced man's condition head on uh, he knew that it had to be on legal grounds. God could not, he's not a man that he should lie. So he couldn't lie and he couldn't repent or change the way he had set it up. He had set it up with man being the under ruler, having the authority and um, so forth. His love counted no sacrifice too great um, that would bring man into fellowship with him once again. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 85 and 10. Psalm 85. And I don't know if you can hear in the background, but the blue tick is hunting humans. Um, when they walk by out in the front of the house, he barks at them like he's a uh, tree and a squirrel. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalm 85.10, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. When, God, when, when Adam committed high treason in the garden, and God turns to the serpent and um, begins to converse with him, um, he gives the promise of the incarnation. Look at Genesis chapter 3. And it says here, unto the woman, he said, um, I'm sorry, I, put, I, I would jump down one verse too far. And I will put enmity between me, thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, obviously this, this language is um, different than we would think. Women don't have seed, number one. They don't have seed. You know, the male has the seed. The women have uh, uh, have eggs. And But God said that he shall put a, an enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. 
thus prophesying that there would be a coming redeemer, there would be an incarnation that would be outside the lineage of man um, producing the offspring. Now, the Bible says that um, we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Hallelujah. And um, you, we know from the gospel accounts of the uh, um, birth of Jesus that she, said she received the word of God. You know, she, you know, he said, yeah, the thing that should be born of thee shall be called the son of the highest and so forth. And uh, she said, how shall that be? And the angel said, the Holy Spirit shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that thing that should be born of thee um, shall be called and so forth. And so she received the word of God and conceived supernaturally in her womb. Um, let's talk about four things concerning this statement here. He'll put it to you between thy seed and the womb. Um, Satan and Satan has been after women. You go in any any country uh, where the gospel hasn't been, and women are treated as as dogs. Um, and even in, in, in other countries, uh, women uh, suffer higher rates of, of disease than men. Now, at the time at the writing of this book, which is in the fifties. The doctors were saying at that point in time that women accounted for about 95% of all hospital cases. That is no longer true. I, I, I did some research. Uh, that seems to have dropped to about 65, 70%, but still women um, spend more time in hospital than men. Um, between her seed and thy seed, we're, talk, we're talking about that. Satan's seed is the unregenerated race of men. The woman's seed is Christ. Christ was hunted from his infancy by Satan's seed until finally they nailed him to the cross. And from the resurrection of Jesus to this day, the church has been the option, object and subject of bitter persecution and enmity of the world. Um, I mean, right now, uh, you know, in America, we're, we're, we're seeing the greatest persecution of the church in the history of the United States. It's taking place everywhere. In our schools, you can no longer call um, Christmas break, you know, the Christmas holiday, it's the winter break. Uh, Easter is no longer Easter or, you know, um, or Good Friday. It's spring break. Now, you could talk about EID and Ramadan and all that, but you can't talk about anything that's Christian. We don't have Christmas trees. We have holiday trees. Okay? There's just an assault on, on Christianity in this country as never before. And um, it, it's an all out. Um, the the uh, LBGTQ agenda is antichrist. God made male and female. Male and female made he them. Uh, them. He said a man will leave his father and mother, cleave unto his wife. Um, th that entire, you know, God created man in his image after his likeness, after his kind. Took the woman from his rib, make her, made her a helpmate unto him. Hallelujah, that they should be joined together and the two should be one flesh. But we, you know, we're, it's, it's perversion to do anything else. But that's, that's the Antichrist spirit. It is Antichrist. It is not biblical. Um, it, is, it is actually a slap in the face of um, the things of God. Uh, even the rainbow is a mockery because God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and his promise never to do again was the rainbow. And the, the um, perverse culture has taken the rainbow as their their symbol, um, you know. And, it, and, they, and there's, no, there's no other reason they chose it then as a mockery towards God. Um, her seed, again, the prophecy shall give birth to a child independent of natural generation. And the child is always called the seed of man, not the seed of a woman. Um, and then at last he got, talks about, he shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Oriental term, um, the head is the head of Satan. And in, uh, uh, in Asian languages, the term bruise the head uh, carries the idea of breaking the authority or lordship over of a ruler. 
Okay, that phrase. I mean, remember, the Bible is not a Western book. Uh, you know, we have the Far East, we have the Middle East, and the, you know, this is a Middle Eastern, so it has uh, Eastern thought <clears throat> in certain phraseology and so forth, not Western thought. I mean, obviously, America wasn't discovered uh, and, and became, um, uh, you know, colonized and populated, etc. cetera, uh, and, and, and the gospel here until, uh, <clears throat> you know, 17, 1,600 years, almost 1,700 after Christ. So uh, the, the writers wrote with an Eastern mindset. So uh, terminology and phraseology had an Eastern formulation to them. And uh, so the bruise of the head uh, meant to break the rulership or authority of. So man uh, has given to Satan, man had given to Satan his dominion. Satan had just come into the dominion that God had given to man. And, the, and as soon as he does, God says, okay, you've got it. But I am telling you, there is a seed coming that's going to bust your head. It's going to take back your authority. A man will come and break your lordship. Now, Satan didn't understand that because he knew there was no man that could do it. He knew, he knew as far as he knew, he won. In that moment, he had won. Except God said, there's one coming. There's one coming that's going to bust your head. So every time somebody got raised up and used the body of God, Satan was attacking him, Satan working against him because he wasn't sure if it was the seed or not. He just knew that God, and he knew when God spoke, it happened. He had, he had, he, he was in eternity. He was in the spirit realm. He had seen God speak. He had seen God declare, see things happen. When he came and put his up to the throne of God and said, I exalt my throne into the heavens. I'll be as the most high. God said, I'll cast you as profane from my presence. And he left. Jesus said it this way. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So Satan knew that even if he tried to confess, if God overrode it with his words of authority. And so Satan's got, I got this, I got this authority of man. I've got this position of man. I'm now the ruler. I've got it. I'm going to rule. And God says, okay, but I'm telling you what, there's one coming. He's going to bust your head. He's going to take your authority. Kind of hard to enjoy something. It's kind of like robbing the mob and having millions of dollars. You're looking over your shoulder the whole time, waiting for somebody to come take you out. Can't really enjoy it. Well, Satan couldn't really enjoy his bounty because God said, I'm sending the seed of a woman, which messed him up, and he's going to take your authority away from you. Hallelujah. Um, the heel... Uh, is the er, is the church in its earth walk the long ages of persecution um, of the church by, by the seed of Satan are a matter of history it is remarkable prophecy how clearly it's been fulfilled before us the incarnate one has come and brought to naught him that had the authority of death that is the devil and delivered all then who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage Hebrews 2.14. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture has also found its fulfillment in Jesus' bitter persecution, which finds its culmination in his death on the cross, and then in the persecution of the church, which is the body of Christ, which carries out his will upon the earth. Hallelujah. Adam called his wife Eve. Because she was the mother of all living. The word Eve in Hebrew is Hava, H-A-V-V-A-H, which literally means living one or the life giver. God tells man that his wife shall be the mother of the life giving one, our Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? I said, Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. That, that's exciting. To know that God from the from the get go said, Okay, now you manipulated this, and you got the authority, and you you're, you're, you got a hold of this, but I am telling you, he is coming. That seed is coming. Going to bust your head, boy. Hallelujah. 
taking the authority back. And there won't be a thing you can do to stop it. And Satan tried. In the temptation in the wilderness, he tried everything he could to stop Jesus, to get Jesus to fall for either the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. All three sins, which are the three categories of sin, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, um, that Adam and Eve fell for in the garden, they fell for all three. And Jesus conquered all three in the wilderness. And Satan tried right there to stop the plan of God. <clears throat> He'd actually tried to stop it when, um, you know, the Magi came. Magi came, and um, Herod learned of the one, and they went and, you know, the, the scribes went and searched the scriptures, and he sent them and said, now come back and tell me where he is so I can come worship him. He didn't want to come worship him. He wanted to kill him. And then, you know, the angel told him to flee. He went and killed all the children two years of under after what he inquired of the Magi. Um, which gives us the uh, you know the the sayings, the uh, the um, underlying truth that the Magi were not at the birth of Christ. They didn't show up in the manger. I know you got a nativity. I've got them too, and I put them. I put the wise men there. It's kind of blank if you don't. I mean, you know, a couple of shepherds and a sheep, and them without the Magi it just kind of seems empty. But they weren't there. They didn't show up until two years later because they went to the house. And saw the young child, not the babe. And when, he, when Herod found out he was mocked and sent to have the children killed, he did it for all those two years and under, after, uh, according to that which he had diligent, diligently inquired of the Magi. Okay? So they weren't there the night Jesus was born. They showed up a couple years later. All right. <clears throat> but still put your nativity scene up this year. Don't freak out. I mean... If you come by my house and see one, I'm going to have them out there. All right? Um, but, you know, he went out with wrath and, and killed all the kids two years under. And then they told, you know, flee into another country. They fled into Egypt and didn't return back into Israel uh, or, uh, until he was 12. Those that sought his life were dead. Okay? And he went into that group in Nazareth. Now, the teaching of the incarnation is not out of even out of harmony with human desire or tradition, it's been believed by all 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 races and all um, religions of the world. Universal man craves an incarnation. Why? Because God created man in His image, after His likeness, after His kind, and He took of His very own spirit and put into that body. Interesting thing. When you get the genealogy of Jesus in the Gospels, and it says, and Adam, the son of God. Adam was created by the hands of God. Hello. Adam had God in that body. He was, he was God-like. Uh, what is man, Psalm 8 says, that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that thou shouldest repent. For thou hast created him a little lower. Now, the King Jimmy uses, Elohim, uses angels to translate Elohim, which is really the improper. It's, it's not the proper translation. Um, it should be um, div deity, divinity, majesty in the form of three or more. Okay? Um, his, but man's spirit hungers for unity with God uh, because he was created in God's image with the ability to partake of God's life, to commune with God, to fellowship with God, to walk with God. And that was severed and broken. And so man has, has longed for an incarnation since then, but could not obtain it. Could not obtain it in that fallen state. Even, even the false gods of the Greeks and Romans were supposed to have been a divine, uh, divine and human, showing that man had a hunger for union with God. The incarnation is no more difficult to believe than the creation of first man. Adam was created by the act of divine power. The rest of the human race was generated by natural process. But this redeemer who is to be born of the woman is to be formed by a spiritual, a special act of divine power. He is God Almighty. And the incarnation is a possibility with him. 
But Satan wants to stop all the plans of God. He works, he works tirelessly, he works endlessly to stop what God does. Now, we really don't know how clearly or how insightful Satan was into the plan of God for man's redemption. We know he didn't fully understand it. Or he wouldn't have crucified Jesus. Look at 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 8. Look at verse five, 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom of God, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. You know, we're talking about princes. We're not talking about, you know, the prince of Egypt. We're talking about spiritual forces, spiritual darkness, the rulers of the darkness of this world because of the fall of man. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. In their lust and desire to destroy God's plan for redemption to rid um, uh, eternity of the promised seed that was going to take back the authority. They crucified Christ, not knowing that was the very means by which Satan's authority would be broken. If they had not crucified Jesus, he would have walked the earth, healing the sick, casting out devils, but humanity would have never been redeemed. Hello. Jesus had to die and take the penalty of man's sin, which was an illegal on Satan's part to do it. Satan had no right to, to take Jesus and take him into hell because Jesus, although tempted at every point, yet like we are, yet without sin. He never became subordinate to Satan's authority by an act of rebellion against the Father. He allowed Satan to overtake him. He took and paid the penalty for man's sin. And when the claims of justice against humanity were satisfied because of this perfect spotless lamb, the Father said, it's enough. This day have I begotten thee. Thou shalt be to me a son, and I'll be to thee a father. And again, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. Hallelujah. Satan thought the crucifixion of Christ was the destruction of Christ's life, not knowing that it was the very means of man's redemption. Nevertheless, Satan must have understood that a redeemer was coming through humanity and would break his dominion. He seeks to destroy the plan of the Father God. I just believe that because God put that out there and he had been year after year, all this time in this, this uh, power lust to destroy the plan of God. When Jesus, you know, how, how um, um, symbolic does Star Wars use some of, really some of the, really the truth of, of the gospel Obi-Wan says, strike me down, I'll be more powerful than you ever. And Vader, in his lust for power, strikes Obi-Wan down, not knowing he messed up when he did it. <laughs> oh, my. You know? But, you know, <clears throat> it's when, uh, and then the, the Emperor tells Darth Vader at the end of the, the prequel, the, the third prequel, he says, where's Padme? He says, in, you, in your anger, you killed her. No! Okay. And, um, you know, Satan in his, his, his anger and his lust and his hatred of God and the things of God. When Jesus came and Jesus lowered his, I lay my life down, I take it up again. Lowered his defenses, his authority. Really, he lowered his defenses of his authority so Satan could take him out. It was the beginning of the end of Satan's dominion over man. Because when Jesus was raised from the dead, he was raised. He stripped him. Hallelujah. Of his rights. I mean, uh, they're not stripping. He, 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 um, glory to God. I'm looking for the, I'm thinking of the words in Colossians. Hallelujah. Um, he didn't, 
not stripped. Um, oh, let me go there real quick. I, I can't get the word in my head, so forgive me. And having, <coughs> glory to God, hallelujah, where is it? What verse is it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And I can't find the verse. Hallelujah. Colossians 1.20 is good. And it's along this line. Hallelujah. But it's not. Um, Do I? <clears throat> yes. Blotting, blotting out the handwriting. There you go. 14 and 15 of 2. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us took con and contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having spoiled or stripped the principalities and powers of their authority, he made a show in them openly, triumphing over them in it. How did it? That's, I was, it was. It was um, and, and, and having spoiled, King James uses the word spoiled, um, but stripped them, put them to utter shameful display as he, as he stripped them of the authority. And he arose from the dead, having the keys of death and of hell. He had taken back the authority over mankind that Satan had, and now man was free to choose to serve God. And there wasn't a thing the devil could do about it to stop man from choosing that. Except deception. Except to lie. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The working of Satan thought the purpose of God follows two lines. He seeks to destroy the knowledge of God on the earth and to destroy the righteous line in humanity. Through these two things, he, it will make it impossible for a Redeemer to ever come through humanity. He desires to separate man from all fellowship with God. Satan's first attempt was to uh, pursue his purpose was the murder of Abel by Cain. Stop the, the righteous line. Genesis 4.4, 4, Abel, he also brought the first thing of his flocks and the fat thereof, and Jehovah, or the Lord, had respect unto Abel and his offering. Hebrews 11.4, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, though which he had witnessed, born to him he was righteous. God bare witness in respect to his gifts, and though it through it he being dead still speaketh. Okay? And so Abel had the witness born that he was righteous. Obviously, Cain was not doing that. Cain was more, you know, Cain was mad because his efforts, think about it, he, he grew the fruit. Abel took a firstling of the flock. Cain took the fruits of his labor and offered to God the fruits of his labor for redemption. And God rejected it. He accepted Abel's. All Cain had to do was go barter with Abel for a flock, for a, 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 a lamb, and give him his buy it. But then offer that to God. <coughs> but he was wroth. He was mad that his works weren't good enough, and so he killed his brother. Um, Satan did not know, but what Abel would be the man's redeemer. He destroyed his life. In doing this, he destroyed the righteous line that was then existing. Uh, Seth was later born to Adam and Eve, and Eve re to, uh, seemed to realize that a righteous line had been destroyed and that Seth had been given the place uh, to fulfill Abel's line because uh, Seth means substitute. And said in Genesis 4.25, God hath appointed me another 
seed instead of Abel, for Cain slew him. As generations passed, spiritual death is at work within the life of man, causing him to walk alienated from God with his mind blinded. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you walk not um, as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Oh, my. Satan, Satan wants to blind man's eyes. He's attempting to make the seed of the woman so utterly estranged from God that he'll never, never be able to send the Redeemer through humanity. So far, the only promise of the Redeemer was general. It was a general promise, the seed of the woman. So get, get, Satan's after anything he can be after, Look, just looking constantly. Later on, God makes the promise of the Redeemer more specific and marked. We study, um, and as we study, we'll see the specific work of Satan to the destruction of the righteous line named by God. The incarnate one is called the seed of the woman, a general term. It becomes more marked, and the incarnate one is specific as being the seed of Abraham. He is termed the seed of David, and he shall come from the family of David. Now we have a whole line of humanity that is marked out. Satan has his eyes on that target. Abraham, then David. That line, he now knows it's not just a general, it could be anybody. Now it's Abraham's line. Oh, now it's even more specific. It's at, out of Abraham's lineage. It's David's line. And then Isaiah 7, 14 comes along and says, A virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and call his name Emmanuel. He had marked out the woman. Amen? The virgin shall conceive. As we study Israel's history, we see the Satan, efforts of Satan directed toward the seed of Abraham, then the seed of David, and then his bitter hatred and persecution of Jesus, born of a virgin. Now, Genesis chapter 5 gives us the genealogy of Noah. As Satan works to destroy a righteous line, God is preserving a line through which the Redeemer shall come. He is working toward the incarnation. You ought to read chapters 4 and 5 of, of uh, Genesis <clears throat> and note two things. After Cain is, uh, is uh, bought conspicuously, um, conspicuously, conspicuously before us by the murder of his brother, his issue is traced to just, just for just a little way, ends in Lamech, also a murderer. The Holy Spirit seeks to interest us in another man altogether. The third son of Adam and Eve, Seth. In this line came Noah, Shem, Abraham, Jacob, and later on Jesus himself, the seed of the woman who bruised the serpent's head. In order to fix our attention on Seth, the righteous line, the divine author, reiterates at the beginning of chapter 5 the original account of creating man, tracing the history of Adam briefly, and then giving in detail the line of Seth. This shows of his, of his dealings now is with this line of man. Genesis chapter 6. Let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them. Then the sons of God saw the men in the daughters of men, that they were fair, they were, took them wise, and they all, uh, all which they chose. Okay. And so we notice there's a big difference between the Canaanites and the Sethites. The righteous line. The Canaanites built cities, invented arts, devised amusements to, palli uh, to palli uh, palliate the curse of sin. The Sethites walked with God. In Genesis 4.25, God in the original, which is Jehovah, the covenant name of God, those also believed and had hope. And oh, let's look. We better. We better go back there. Genesis four twenty one, and twenty two, and then twenty five. And his brother's name 
was Jubal. He was the father of all such as had the harp and organs. And Zillah also bare Tubal Cain and the instructor of uh, um, evening artificy in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. And Lebek said unto his wives, Ida and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wound and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Wow. And then verse 25 says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Hallelujah. God in the original, it's Jehovah. They believed and had hope in his promise and knew and loved that name. It is well to note that the seventh from Adam through the line of Cain, Lamach, was a polygamist, murderer, and worshiper of the a God of forces, while the seventh in line of Seth, Enoch, was a man who had this testimony that he pleased God. And he was translated. Hallelujah. So we see the unrighteous line and the righteous line. In the sixth chapter of Genesis. Genesis Lord help me. That's just, that was just. Y'all should put some laughers out. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for laughter to come up on that one. Come on. Y'all still out there? Huh? Like Geonosis. Gene says, Lord help me. Nobody laughed. All right. In the sixth chapter of, okay, somebody finally did. All right. In the sixth chapter of Genesis, we see again the working of Satan to thwart the purpose of God. He causes an intermarriage between the line. Oh, somebody didn't put laughter. They put, oh, no. Yeah, that was bad, pastor. <laughs> um, intermarriage in the line of Cain with the righteous line. This corrupts the line through which the Redeemer shall come to an extent that only Noah is left in the worship of the covenant God. Jehovah saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. Genesis 6, 5. Satan had destroyed the knowledge of God in the heart of man. The thought of every man's heart was evil continually. Only Noah knew and walked with the true God. If, hum now, if humanity were left in that condition, when Noah died, the knowledge of God would have been completely lost. The righteous line would have been destroyed and the incarnation would have been an impossibility. Seemingly, Satan had triumphed in his efforts, but God Almighty's purpose was not to be thwarted. It was a small matter for him to bring an end to all other human humanity in this corrupt condition. If the righteous line were to be preserved and the knowledge of himself kept upon the earth, he must destroy that perverse line between the Canaanites and the Sethites that had been created, which had lost the knowledge of God. Because he had to have that line of, that was still left in Noah to redeem humanity. In the, in the, in the past, when you look at the, the flood and, and so forth, you may think, um, that was that was that was that was bad. But when you look at it in the light of the need of incarnation, it's easier. It's, it's a little bit easier to, to see why. So, in the light of the fact that man needs had to be met by the incarnation, we can see that the flood was imperative. There was no way around it. Satan was constantly at work. He's still at work today. I mean, our, uh, our the forty. Uh, fourth president of this country said that um, America is no longer a Christian nation. And how you Christians can just go and worship a man that was pro-homosexual, anti-Christ, support, um, brought Ramadan prayer to the White House. I don't understand it. And I, I don't care about the parties. I'm just talking about this is evil. And there has been a thing unleashed on our nation because of it and because of the support of people that 
um, is trying to destroy America. But on the other hand, there is a righteous line. There are those who will not bow the knee to Baal. Glory to God. Well, let's get into our um, question and answer session. I, I guess I should. I, um, I need to double check something as I do this. Okay. Explain the four statements of Genesis 3 and 15. A. Women became the object of Satan's disdain and is treated with contempt historically. B. Satan's seed hunted Christ until they finally nailed him to the cross. C. The seed of the woman is the prophecy of the virgin birth. And D. Bruise his head is a term in the East that means break the lordship of the ruler. <clears throat> and why does universal man crave union with deity? Man craves union with deity because he originally was created in the image and the ability to partake of God's life. Three, how does history reveal the fact that universal man craves an incarnation? Well, by man's drinking blood of human sacrifices, naming kings after the titles of deities, and making emperors or kings gods. The Greek and Roman gods were supposed to have been divine and human. Number four. What were the two means Satan used to thwart God's plan of the incarnation? One, by destroying the knowledge of God on the earth. And then two, by destroying the righteous line in humanity. What was the first attempt to destroy the righteous line? Question number five. <coughs> was when Cain murdered Abel. Number six, what's the distinction between the Canaanites and the Sethites? Canaanites built cities, invented arts, devised amusements um, to pall palliate, or that means to, moder uh, to moderate the intensity of the curse of sin. The Sethites, they walked with God. Hmm. Wow. What can you tell us about Adam's descendants through Cain? The recording of, Ad, of Cain's descendants ends with Lamech, also a murderer like Cain. We have nothing else about Cain after Lamech. Verse uh, number eight, why is special attention given in chapter five to the line of Seth? That is to show us that God's dealings with the righteous line are now with the lineage of Seth. Question nine. What was the purpose in Satan causing the intermarriage of the Canaanites and the Sethites as recorded in Genesis 6, 1 through 3? It was to corrupt the righteous line with the Canaanites and thwart the plan to redeem mankind. And why was the flood necessary? Because only God, Noah knew God and walked with God. And upon his death, the knowledge of God would have ceased or been erased from the earth. Therefore, God had to destroy humanity except for Noah and his family in order to preserve humanity and the righteous line. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did we get it all? We got it all in. Praise the Lord. There is a lot of material to cover, and we, can, we could probably spend two, three weeks on each one of these, but uh, that would make us a three-year Bible study or a two-and-a-half-year Bible study. And um, when we're only doing it once a week, I mean, if we were doing this, obviously, in a Bible school, it would be a semester. We could do it in a semester in college or something, and um, that would be great, but we, we don't. Um, don't forget to be with us on Sunday. And if you're, you're in the Greensboro area, Piedmont Triad area, we'd love to have come and join us. Currently meeting uh, at the um, the uh, facility of New Life Family Church in High Point, it's sixty seven hundred, uh, Kent sixty seven to one Ken Corey Road in High Point. Um, well, actually, it's a Jamestown address, although it, it really is High Point. It's on the Jamestown mailing route. Um, we'd love to have you visit with us and be with us. Um, and um, you can you can call us or email us, and we'll we'll give you directions if you need them. Um, but we just love to have we meet at, at one o'clock on Sundays. Hallelujah. So come and be with us and uh, be blessed. And uh, until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. 
that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.